Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to do uh, an install of Selenium HQ Grid and also I'm going to show you how to do a very simple uh, test case uh, using the grid uh, in Ubuntu. So, you know, since uh, here we have a fresh install of Ubuntu, uh, I'm just using a virtual machine here, um, Oracle VM VirtualBox which is open source software for VMs. So I just took uh, the latest install of Ubuntu uh, desktop version, which is 11.10. Uh, so the first step is uh, uh, Selenium runs on Java, so you have to first make sure you have the JRE installed. So you know, open up the terminal, and then we're going to type sudo apt get install open jdk we'll get version 7 which is the latest one uh, jre put in the password for that now it's going to ask you would you like to continue hit y hit enter and now it's going to download jre and install it for us So while that's happening, uh, l a little background on Selenium. Selenium is basically an open source software that is used to uh, basically automate browsers. So you know you can do things like automated testing, uh, or you can do load testing. Uh, it's really up to you. So it's a really powerful tool, and uh, many companies are currently using it for various reasons. Uh, Google, in particular, actually uses Selenium to do a lot of their automated uh, testing, uh, automated browser testing. So it, it's a pretty good software. Um, the problem I, I noticed is that uh, it, because they've made a lot of changes to the software lately and there's not much documentation as far as how to set up the grid and how to actually use it. Um, you know, it took me a few days just to kind of dig around and look at the source code and figure out what's going on. Um, even installing the grid was, was a bit of a pain. So hopefully this video will alleviate some of that. Let's give it a couple more minutes for GRE to install. So the next step is <clears throat> we want to download the uh, Selenium uh, program. So we're going to go to open up Firefox. Okay, we're going to go to seleniumhq.org. Go under download. Uh, the first thing we would like to download is the server. So I'm just going to click on this. Uh, the latest version here is 2.13, so I'm just going to download that. Okay. Now that it's downloaded, we are going to now go under downloads directory um, it put it under temp for some reason okay so we're going to basically move this to our home folder and I'm going to create a folder here called selenium under my home folder but you can it, pretty much put it anywhere you want. Oops, I meant to say folder. Okay, and then we're going to move. Okay, so now we've downloaded the program, so let's go ahead and start it up. So, again, we're going to open up the terminal. 
and we're going to type go to the home direct the selenium directory first Thought we created selenium directory. Oh, sorry, it's case sensitive. Okay, so now we're going to actually start the program. Um, we're going to start the hub. Uh, you know, selenium has three basic basic components to it. You have the IDE, which is used for um, you know cr uh, creating the actual tests and, and recording, and then you have the hub, which is responsible for coordinating all of the sub hubs. Um, or the nodes when, uh, when you're doing a test and then of course you have the node which is the uh, program which actually uh, runs the browser so the first thing you need to install is the hub so to do that we're just going to say um, Java now since we to download the program as a jar file we're going to use the, the jar uh, uh, parameter here and then point to the um, the file in that we just downloaded. So that's selenium server standalone dash two dot thirteen dot zero dot jar. Okay. Then we're going to specify the role that we want to run this in. So we're gonna say hub. So dash role hub. Okay. Hit enter. And now you'll see the hub is actually gonna start up and it's up. So to verify that it's up uh, by default, it runs on port, um, I believe, uh, 4444. So you can just go to localhost slash colon. And here, if you see the screen here, that means that uh, your hub is up and running. Okay? So that step is good. The next step you want to do is uh, you want to open up another terminal while that's running. Um, of course you can definitely run this in the background using the ampersand but just for demos I'm going to show you here so next thing we want to do is run the uh, run a node on the same server um, so to do that with same thing we're just going to do Java jar actually let me go to the selenium folder Java selenium server standalone dash two dot thirteen dot zero dot jar whoops two dot thirteen dot zero dot jar and this time we're going to say the role is a node okay so so if you specify a role as a node you also have to specify where the hub is okay so um, again, the hub could be on a different machine or it could be on the same machine in this case. So we just have to specify the HTTP URL to that hub. So as we did before, HTTP localhost. Okay, we did port 444. And then the you have to point to grid slash register. Okay. So that's basically telling the node where the hub is, okay, uh, and where to register. So we're going to also specify the max sessions, and I'm going to say 20. By default, that's five, but I like 20. Uh, basically, what you're saying here is how many browsers are going to be open on this node at the same time and doing stuff. Um, and also, we're going to run this on port 555. Okay, so our node is up and running. Okay, um, so the next thing we want to do is again, uh, this is just one node. You know, if you want to, uh, you know, if you have more than one machine, if you have you know multiple machines, just run the node, you know, uh, and then register with the hub, and you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to actually do a a uh, we're going to record an actual test and run it. So this one is a little tricky. It took me a little while to figure out because it's not really well documented, but uh, it's actually quite easy once you know how to do it. 
So first thing we're going to do is go under Downloads again under SeleniumHQ.org and download this IDE program under Firefox. Okay, you have to use Firefox for the IDE. Um, so you're just going to click on this, click Allow, and that's going to download a plugin for Firefox. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to hit Alt, go under Tools, and under Tools you should see a Selenium IDE option. I'm going to click on that, and this will open up the IDE. Okay, uh, by default the record button is playing here, so it's recording what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go to Google.com, and I'm going to say test. Okay, now you notice one thing as I'm doing things on this website, it's recording all my actions here. So uh, let's do another test. And I'm going to click on search, and that's my basic test. And I'm going to now stop this. I'll rename this to, I'll call it uh, Google Test Case. Okay. So now that we have that, um, I'm going to save this test. If you go under File, um, save test case. I'll just save it under my Selenium folder here, under my home directory. So I'll call this Google test case. Okay. So once you have this uh, test, well, what you need to do is I'll export this into um, something that can be run by the grid and the nodes. So what you have to do is export test case as and you have many options here. Uh, for this demo, we're just going to use the um, the the Python uh, remote control test. Okay. Uh, what this will do is it actually kind of give you cookie cut code on how to call the grid, right, to run the test, which will then pass the uh, program into the nodes to run your actual test. So. Um, it's pretty simple, so you just say Python remote control. Okay, I'm going to call this uh, Google test dot py. Okay, so if we go back to our Selenium folder here, you should see a Google test dot py file, and it's got some cookie cut code here for us to use. Okay, um, so you notice it has by default. It's assuming that your local host port 444, the the browser that's when it's going to use to run the test, and also the steps that it recorded. Okay, so in this case, all we need to do is uh, let's change this to Firefox because we don't have Chrome installed right now. Okay, so now we have our Python script. Um, now, in order to run this, though, we have to install Python. So again, we're going to do sudo apt get install python pip continue yes. Um, so the next thing we want to do is install sudo pip. This is a Python install here. Um, dash u Selenium. So this will basically install the lab client libraries for Selenium for Python. So in order for our code to to run on the machine, you have to have this this client uh, installed. Okay. So now, all we need to do is run our script, and we should be good to go. So here again, we post it to localhost 
4444, which is our uh, hub. I'm sorry, yes, our hub. Um, and we want to use the Firefox as our test browser, the base URL, and then here's the steps that it needs to run. Okay, so we basically now just go to. Let me get to the right terminal here. Uh, this one. Okay, so we're going to again go to CD Selenium. We're going to run our Google test. PY Python, sorry. Okay. Now, what's happening now is it's actually contacting the hub, sending the script, and now you see that the hub sent the script to the node. The node is executing it in Firefox and it's returning the results to the client. So here you see that it took one test and ran in 12.55 seconds. So, uh, very basic. Again, you know, if you want to do a more advanced stuff, you know, you can either change your script here, you know, um, or you can use the IDE again to record, you know, a much, much more uh, steps. And also, uh, if you want to do load testing, not just unit testing, you have to figure out how to run this Python script in parallel. Uh, you know, so if you want to do a load test of 100 users. You know, basically, you have to send uh, the hub 100 requests at the same time. But the hub is pretty good; it's scalable enough to know that, you know, uh, however many nodes you have with available browsers, it'll actually uh, start using those. So, you know, if you want to do a load test of, you know, let's say 100 users, you need, uh, I would say, at least five hubs. You know, one with each with 20 browsers that can run simultaneously for a load test. So that's it. Uh, this was an end-to-end -end video on how to set up Selenium Grid and create a test case and execute it on the on the nodes. So thank you.